So let's begin our look at trigonometric functions. And what we're going to do today is look at the measure of angles in both degrees and radians and finding coterminal angles. Well, first thing we have to remember is how to measure an angle. And when we're measuring an angle, we always measure in standard position. And standard position is the measure from the x-axis. And the x-axis is what we call the initial ray. And we're going to compare that to some other arm, which we call the terminal arm. And the angle between the initial arm, or the initial ray, and the terminal arm is the angle in standard position. And we're often going to use Greek letters to measure that angle. There's our angle in standard position between the initial ray, or the initial arm, and the terminal arm. What we have to remember when we're measuring this is that zero degrees is our starting point, and each of these four corners is 90, 180, 270, and eventually we'll work our way around back to 360. That's how we measure angles in standard position. Now, a degree, which you're most familiar with, is really just 1 360th of a rotation of a circle. That's the standard for a degree. Full circle 360. One degree is 1 360th. So if we're measuring 130 degrees, if we're doing a little sketch, 130 degrees is somewhere in between here. And that's how we would state the angle in standard position, 130 degrees. We don't want to forget an arrow. It's between 90 and 180. Well, negative 100, all we do is we go backwards this time go in the opposite direction. There's our terminal arm, and theta in this case is negative 100 degrees. When we go in the negative, this is negative 90, just going backwards around the circle, negative 180, negative 270, and again, eventually back to zero or negative 360. Now, if we have something like 400, well, that just means we've gone around the circle more than once. One full circle is 360 degrees. So if we take this number and just minus 360 degrees, we're really just a full circle plus 40 degrees. So if we were drawing this in standard position, we do a full circle plus 40 degrees. It'll look something like that. And there is our angle of 400 degrees. Notice they all have that circular rotation and an arrow that stops at the terminal arm. There's our angles in standard position if we're measuring with degrees. Now, coterminal angles are an angle that share the same terminal arm. So if we were doing an angle, let's just put an angle in here. Imagine this is 50 degrees. Well, we could get to 50 degrees just by going from the initial arm to the terminal arm. That's one potential way. But we could also go one full circle and get to that terminal arm. Or we could actually go backwards to get to that same terminal arm. Now, if we're trying to find the coterminal angle, all we do is just take our original angle in standard position and either add or subtract 360. If we added the 360, we would say this is an angle of 410 degrees. If we took our original angle in standard position and minus 360, that tells us we're at negative 310 degrees. Just adding and subtracting multiples of 360. And we could go around that circle many, many times. We're not limited to one. You can go around as many times as you like. And when you get back to that terminal arm, that's what's considered a co-terminal angle. Share the same terminal arm. Well, the principal angle, when we're measuring an angle in standard position, is the smallest positive coterminal angle. So if we were to sketch our angle in standard position, it might look something like this. The smallest positive, positive is counterclockwise, the smallest positive coterminal angle is what's called the principal angle. And that's the angle we're going to use, the angle in standard position that's the smallest coterminal angle. We're not going to worry about going around the circle multiple times. So if we're given any angle, like in this example, 
we have an angle of 70 degrees. And let's just do a quick little sketch here. Angle of 70 degrees is going to be something like that. We can sketch our angle in here, 70 degrees. We know that it's starting at the initial arm. Looks something like that. There's our angle. Now we want to determine a positive and negative coterminal angle. Well, a positive coterminal angle is really just as easy as adding 360 degrees. We take our angle, go one full circle, and eventually end up at that coterminal angle. And we just add 360 to 70, and we get 430 degrees. There's a positive coterminal angle. Well, if we want a negative coterminal angle, we just start at our initial arm and go backwards to get to that terminal arm. The calculation, just minus 360 degrees, and we're at negative 290 degrees. And there's our positive and negative coterminal angle. Now, we could do higher multiples of 360. Doesn't matter. You'll still get to the same terminal arm. Well, let's introduce a new unit of measure, a radian measure. And this unit of measuring at first might seem weird, but it's actually much more useful, especially in science and engineering. You're actually going to move away from degrees and work in radians. Now, a radian measure is a unit of angular measure equal to the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc length equal in length divided by the radius of the circle. Well, pretty easy to say there. Let's actually put that and let's explore what a radian actually is. A radian is if we had a circle and we measure the angle from the center, the angle here, the theta value of the angle is equal to the arc length. And in this case, the arc length would be that little piece cut out by that angle. So that's what one radian is. And so if we take our circle and we say that has a radius of r, whatever the number is, this would also be r and that length would also be r. So all three lengths of that circle the arc length in green and the radiuses there, the r's, are all the same. That's what makes a radian. Let's explore it even further with this. Consider a circle with a radius of r units. So here's our circle from the center. We're going to have a radius of r units. Now we know that one full rotation around the circle, all the way around the circle, is 360 degrees. And the arc length for one complete rotation, the arc length for one complete rotation, well, we normally don't define it that way in a circle. When we want to find the length around the circle, what we do is we call that the circumference. The circumference of a circle is the arc length around one complete rotation. And remember, to find the circumference, it's just 2 pi R. So we're going to use this information and we're going to find this ratio of arc length divided by radius. Arc length divided by radius, which is really just the definition of a radian. So in a full circle, the arc length is 2 pi r. If we divide that by the radius, we get a value of 2 pi. Now that is the radian measure of a circle. So if we compare that to what we know in degrees, 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians. That's our unit conversion. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. Now we can go one step further and divide both sides by 2. And this is really what we're going to use all the time. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And we actually don't even put radians. We just call it pi. It's assumed that if there's no symbol, it's in radians. 
The symbol tells you 180 degrees, no symbol is radians. So 180 degrees is equal to pi. Now this is what we're going to use to do our conversion, 120 degrees to radians. We always want to keep in mind that 180 degrees is equal to pi. So we're just going to do a simple unit conversion. We want to take 120 degrees, we're going to multiply it by some conversion factor. And the conversion factor in this case, we want degrees on the bottom and radians on the top. So we're going to multiply by pi over 180. That'll give us 120 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. And what we do with radians is we leave it in multiples of pi. So what we're really going to have to do is simplify this piece of the fraction. 120 degrees over 180. And just do some simple conversions there. Divide both numbers by 60 degrees. And we'll get 2 pi over 3. There's our conversion. 120 degrees is the same as 2 pi over 3 radians. Now we can actually work backwards. 7 pi over 6 to degrees. Well, it's the same idea. We take our value in radians, 7 pi over 6, and this time we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. Well, we know we want to get rid of the radians, so it must be in the denominator. We want to keep the degrees around. So we put it in the numerator. Notice in this question, the pi's are actually going to cancel out, which is helpful. And we have 7 times 180 degrees divided by 6. And we can just simplify that down. Fire it in your calculator if you need to. And we get 210 degrees. So there's the conversion. 7 pi over 6 radians to degrees is 210 degrees. Well, there's certain radians that we need to know off the top of our head. Converting from radians is very, very important. So I want you to take a second, pause the video, and do these four conversions. Convert them from radians to degrees so we can memorize them. So there are the four values to memorize. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and pi over 6 is 30 degrees. And we need to be able to interchange each of those as we work our way through. And we're going to look at this in more, and we're going to look at this in more detail in class.